What I want to learn more about is electric vehicle batteries. Brian, you actually did a very deep dive video just a few days ago where you asked the question, do we have enough electrical vehicle batteries for an electrical vehicle future? And shockingly, <laughs> you seem to indicate yes, with, of yeah. course, some caveats. So today, what I'd love to do is if you can cover some of the highlights and let's go through it very quickly, give me the main points. And the questions I'm going to be asking you are, what are the elements that make up batteries needed for an electric vehicles? What are their relative scarcity? So in other words, which ones are the ones that are least abundant and the most difficult to obtain? Next question would be, what are the new battery chemistries? I think you've been researching a little bit of the new uh, chemistries that are coming online. Is recycling an option? Is that something that needs to happen? Is it already available? And then finally, which car companies do you think are best positioned to have the long-term supply that's needed to be able to be able to deliver the most volume that's required? Okay, so let's go through each of those questions. Let's start off with, tell me what are the elements, uh, what, tell me about a battery, what is it, and which one of those elements are the most dire need for us to obtain, the most difficult to obtain? So even since I made the video, there have been some news that's come out uh, in terms of what they're made of and how scarce it is. Starting at the easy end, we've got the case itself, which is going to be metal, steel, aluminum, depending who you're buying it from. Uh, then the lithium is uh, in there. It's it's, it's more abundant than a lot of people realize. It exists in kind of every country. Germany alone has known deposits big enough to satisfy probably five or 10 years of the entire world supply of batteries if they were to need to. There's Utah, Nevada, all over the US. Uh, it, the Carolinas have, it's everywhere. And it's, uh, lithium is not a bottleneck. Then you get into things like copper. We should be good on that. It doesn't use much, and copper is something that's well-established. And then you've got cobalt, which is only used in high nickel batteries, like most of what Tesla uses, most of what EVs in the U.S. use. But globally, most EVs use lithium iron phosphate batteries, and those use mm -hmm. no scarce minerals. They use steel and uh, phosphorus and it's uh, and lithium. Uh, and everything in it is easy to get. And the report this week was that cobalt prices have fallen by like 60 or 70% in the past year. Um, and I'm not sure why. Maybe there was an artificial scarcity. Uh, maybe the supply has gotten back in, in line. Maybe the speculators have run out of fuel to try and drive it up. But the cobalt prices have gotten reasonable again. Which, uh, how much do we need with cobalt? I thought we've already started moving away from it. And specifically Tesla is what I'm referring to. Yes. So Tesla's nickel batteries, which use cobalt, use less than they've ever used before. And we're talking, it's, it's a very small amount of the battery. Uh, but the LFP batteries use none at all. So how much cobalt do we need? Uh, not not that much, and it's it's apparently not a concern. The supply chain in cobalt has normalized. Okay, and then what you you said that there's enough lithium around the world. Correct, I believe that. But obviously, the difficult part is the refining, right? Because it's not it's not all in one area. So, what's the challenge there? Of uh, you know, Tesla is going to have to create their own lithium refinery that broke ground last month. Um, and then they expect it to have that in mass production by two years from now. And they're going to create more of these. They're going to announce more of these. But, you know, how it's not that easy to get these lithium um, out of the ground, correct? It depends where you're getting it from. Right now, most lithium comes from places like Chile, where it's pumped up from under the desert floor in a, mm -hmm. in a brine and then uh, evaporated in ponds, which does a lot of the refining, so to speak, right there. So what they're exporting isn't, you know, I saw a ridiculous uh, piece, a hit piece by a think tank, a natural gas think tank, saying that it takes a half a uh, half million pounds of of uh, mining to get enough lithium for one car. And that's ridiculous. You're telling me there was mm -hmm. uh, trillions of tons mined last year? Trillion. Come on. It doesn't make any sense. And so in the case of the of those, it's very easy to get. But uh, what the refinery in 
uh, Galveston is going to be doing it, is apparently processing it from rock, which is a more complicated process, but by shortening the distance traveled, it, it still makes sense. And with these things, with the extreme scale, the extreme growth industry-wide, an all-of-the-above approach is what appears to be the best strategy. Okay, good. Next question then. So what are these new battery chemistries and do we need them? And we have LFP that's doing a good job. But of course, if it can have faster charging, if it can have longer life, all of this is going to be just quite revolutionary. But uh, what, what I've been hearing. And I've also heard that Elon has said in the past, there's always new battery chemistries. We're always seeing these new revolutions and discoveries. But the question is, it's not whether or not they can do it in the lab. It's whether or not they can do mass production. That's the create critical rate limiting step. Right. It doesn't matter how good the battery is if it can't leave the lab. So the new, uh, the new chemistries that we're looking at are sodium ion, which takes the lithium out and replaces it mm -hmm. with something that's even more abundant, sodium. CATL has announced that they expect to enter scale production by the end of this year. That would, sodium ion does not appear to have very high energy density but it may still be something that could be used in some cars in some instances. But more importantly, it could be used uh, in stationary storage where the volume uh, isn't as critical. And then right now, mega packs are made with the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Those could be redirected back to automotive use, uh, which would save a problem right there. A and sodium ion is just one of the chemistries. Uh, from my conversation with Jordan Giesegi, who helped me uh, better understand the subject material for the video that I that we were talking about. I yeah. uh, he said there's also M3P batteries, which are the cert the future is less immediate, uh, but looks promising. And every there's so many institutions, so many research groups, so many companies in every country working on the problem and finding solutions. And while you may not you hear the miracle battery breakthrough stories every day. But what you don't hear is the incremental, actual, real-world success stories. You can see from the charts that batteries have gotten cheaper, energy density has improved, the uh, scarce minerals are, are used less and less commonly. It's just all getting better. And so all of these new chemistries are good because if one bottleneck appears, if tomorrow the Congo bans the export of cobalt, what are you going to do? You, mm. you need alternatives. Do you expect that Tesla's going to announce something new other than the current battery setups that they have and chemistries that they're using in the investor day next week? No, I think at most they would announce a philosophical change rather than a physical change saying we're going to uh, approach these other things in, in different ways. We're going to um, diversify or, or shift certain ones to certain products um, and, you know, not originally they were using the high nickel batteries and power walls. They've already moved away from that. If they could do something else like sodium ion, that would be great. Um, but I think they're going to just keep as, as many of their eggs in different baskets as possible. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, next question is recycling, right? So some people believe that recycling of electric vehicle batteries is critical because you know, it's much easier to take, recycle the batteries than it is to, you know, go through the whole process of refining it and, and uh, putting it back into normal, you know, creating new ones. And then we've been hearing from JB Straubel, who's the original co-founder of Tesla along with Elon. And now he started his own company called Redwood Materials. And we've been hearing about him. He's been t getting out there um, and, and joining more presentations in the last several months. Are they ready is there something that you're expecting? Again, investor presentation next week is Elon and JB Straubel going to be standing together and they're going to be talking about a partnership. I don't know if a partnership is necessary right now. I know that in Nevada, they do in-house recycling of their, of their cells that don't meet spec. So I don't know how many of those end up over at Redwood Materials. Is recycling important? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. In part because it's the materials in the ground are finite. The materials in the ground that are affordable to get to is more finite. Uh, the beauty is if at some point the the number of batteries the world needs levels off, 
and we just we only need X number per year, but at the same time, X number are being retired from 20 years ago, you can have not quite a closed loop, but almost. A lot of things don't recycle well. Plastic is a good example of things that don't recycle well because when you reform carbon, uh, the length of the carbon atom chain shortens every time. So starting with long ones and getting them shorter is easy. Get, starting with short ones and getting them longer is harder. When you buy a uh, hard piece of luggage in China, the question you always ask them is, is, is this first use plastic or is this second use plastic? Because if it's second use plastic, it's not going to su survive. It might not even make it on the flight. And that is not true with lithium or cobalt or copper or steel or aluminum. All the things that are going into the battery are going to be just as good the second time or the hundredth time as the first time. And like Elon said, it's a lot easier to mine densely rich ore like a battery pack than it is to just dig up dirt and process that. So J.B. Straubel uh, was quoted very recently as saying that all of those materials we put into a battery and into an electric vehicle, they don't go anywhere. They don't get degraded. 99% of those metals can be reused again and again and again, literally hundreds, perhaps thousands of times. So this is going to be a big deal, right? And so where do you think, um, are they going to be ready soon? Like I said, I don't think, you don't oh, think Tesla needs to yes. partner with them, but yeah. they So it is already proven technology. The bottleneck at this point is batteries are lasting longer than people realized. Yeah. The oldest batteries out there, the ones that degraded the worst and the most quickly were the Nissan Leaf batteries. And a lot of those haven't gone to recyclers because people have found uses for them outside of cars. They're using them for off-grid storage at, at uh, cabins and other applications like that for home backup systems. Uh, they Even a degraded battery is still uh, still has some value until it completely yeah. fails. So the technology appears to absolutely work. The only thing they're waiting on is a supply of EV batteries coming off the market. And those mm -hmm. will have cash value, uh, substantial cash value, depending on what they are. And they'll be, I imagine, at a factory like what their Redwood Materials just got a $2 billion loan, uh, loan or grant, some kind of uh, help that is allowing them to build a large-scale facility. And what I imagine you'll see is different lines for different cars where they will they will say this is where we take apart lithium ion mm -hmm. batteries this is where we take apart lfp batteries this is where we take apart different ones because i imagine each one has a slightly different uh procedure um but it's it's happening it's necessary it's going to be profitable and it's going to be good Nice. I like the way you put that. Okay. So last question for you then is which car companies do you think is like currently best positioned to have this long-term supply? Um, we know that Tesla has been making significant moves in this place, um, in this area where they're capturing and, you know, securing all these long-term contracts. What other car companies have done this you think is positioned to be able to make sure they have enough of these elements to create enough of the batteries or partner with all the other battery, battery manufacturers? So I haven't seen anyone whose approach is as thorough and robust as Tesla's. If you look at the largest battery manufacturers in the world, you've got uh, Panasonic at the top, who, as you know, they partner with in both Nevada and for Japanese-made cells in the models S and X. They've got uh, Samsung, who is building a 4680 pilot line. They've got uh, LG, who provides the batteries for the long-range versions in China and uh, all the models out of Berlin, I want to say. Uh, they've got uh, BYD is now selling them blade batteries for the standard range. Tesla works with all of the big companies, all of them, and will themselves soon also be a top 10 battery producer. Tesla uniquely has mineral rights in different states and countries where other companies don't. So who is number two in their battery supply uh, security? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but they are mm -hmm. not within sight. Tesla's going to lap them several times before any of them get sorted out. If you've got a problem with SK Innovations and you're Ford and your batteries are burning, you don't have a, a plan B. You just got to get it to work. And if SK Innovations finds that they're going to have trouble getting minerals, that's a problem all around. So I guess I would say BYD is, is 
is second best. Actually, now that I think about it, they are second best and they are close because they are a battery company who also makes cars. Um, and all the Chinese companies are going to have an uncommon advantage because China is a big mining com country and they control something like 60% of the world's lithium deposits at present. So nice. I think all the Chinese manufacturers will do well, including Tesla. And that, uh, yeah, BYD is probably well positioned. Yeah. Unusually so well not positioned. only is Tesla a car manufacturer, but they're also a battery manufacturer. But now they're a, they're a element. They're actually a mining company creating these re lithium refinery for now, possibly even announcing more ambitious goals to make sure that they can get vertically integrated and get those elements that they need. I mean, other car companies not only have to secure the partnerships with the battery manufacturers, but they themselves need to get into this. Uh, they need to vertically integrate. Otherwise, they're going to get caught at some point where they're not going to have the, enough out there for what they need, if they even have the potential for the volume that they're claiming that they'll be able to get to. Tesla is so vertically integrated through their own supply chain, so diverse in the products they sell. There was, it was laughable 10 years ago when people said that Tesla is going to be the next GM or the next Toyota. And then it was laughable five years ago when they said Tesla is going to be the next Apple. But to me, Tesla's already the next East India trading company. They're right. going to own everything. This is going to be a company with margins and revenue and industries that we haven't seen in a very long time. Perfect. Thank you so much, Brian. If you haven't seen Brian uh, White, he has his own YouTube channel called My Tesla Weekend, and he's on Twitter at, at 4K Podcast. Go follow him, go watch his videos. And right after this one, go ahead and watch his long form video on batteries, which is covering a lot of the topics we just did today. Thanks again, Brian. Appreciate you. Thank you much.